Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you are having a nice Sunday. So today I'll be talking about the PhD application process for USA. What are the things involved in detail? We have a guest to talk about this. She is a recent graduate from Indian Institute of Technology, BHU. She finished her B.Tech degree in Pharmaceutical Engineering and Technology in 2022. And right after that, finishing the B.Tech, she landed a PhD position in US in one of the most prestigious universities that is University of California, Santa Cruz. She'll be sharing her experience. I'll also give some overview how the things are compared to Germany or other European countries. It's going to be a long video as you have already seen from the time. So what I would recommend some tips before we start the video is that if you do not have the whole time to watch the video, I have made chapters, watch one or two chapters. Each chapter is 10 to 15 minutes long. So take a pen, notebook, write down stuff, whatever you find is important because at the end of it, you would forget half of the things mentioned. So take notes. Also, in order to save some time, I generally would recommend to watch the video in 1.25x or 1.5x speed. But if you prefer normal speed, that's also fine. So some of the topics, important topics that we have covered in this video include the application process, when to start, the cost of living, what documents are required, how is the uh, how is the life experience as a student living in California, US. So she's already in California right now and she'll be connecting with us from there. She's already living there for past one and a half months. I'll share my own experience. What is the differences in Germany and US? What are the pros and cons, everything. So without wasting any further time, let's start with the video. And if you like the video, do consider hitting that red button, subscribe to the channel. That would really motivate me to keep making such content for you guys. And let's begin. So, when did you start uh, your application process? Uh, okay, so my application process, I started um, like filling the applications, I started in October uh, because mostly the deadline for US universities is December, 1st of December and the applications will open in October. So, you start filling the applications from October but the preparation for the application starts one year ahead. So, I started the university shortlist for a year ago. And it takes a lot of time for PhD. And specifically, when you are going for direct PhD after B.Tech. So, it takes time to get the universities, which will take in students who are undergrads, or which will also have some research area, which is specific to what you are looking at. So, it takes a lot of time. Which year is October? Idea lag uh, October 2021. 2021. Correct. Yeah, mm -hmm. application, like you started in October 2021. And when okay. did you actually got the confirmation that you got the position? Um, so I had my in US but before that I also had um, a confirmation from Canada uh, also so that came in September 2021 only so okay. before applying to US universities I had one safe university to get into in Canada but Canada. you then preferred USA yeah generally Europe meto in, in Europe you cannot get a PhD right after your BTEC or uh, this bachelor's you have to have with this master's degree but in us I, I guess it's like 16 years of education and then you can get into phd so 12 plus 4 years ptec and how many applications did you make in total uh i made i think six applications in us and then one in canada so i got direct call from like um, not call i mean i got an admit from uc santa cruz but I also got a reject from uh, Cornell University, but they offered me master's position. Um, 
that's all otherwise i got rejects <laughs> i did not actually apply to a lot of us colleges because i had one canadian university uh, and that was a good uh, position so it was a direct uh, so i got a direct position under a professor there so the program was different there so i did not have to rotate i got a direct call from the university uh, it was university of british columbia uh ubc vancouver by the way and here so that's why i that was a safe option so i did not apply to a lot of us universities otherwise i would have applied to like 12 or 13 if i did not anything else no then you i think uh, you got quite good responses within uh, applying like very few applications and uh, next point is that it is only this that you had a very good research experience profile throughout your btech and you also made uh, did internships and those i think played a crucial role so the main key the strength in your application yeah so i think that uh, obviously research experience did count because in my undergrad i did i researched just for 3 years like proper research in the field which i have wanted to get into so that was just 3 years but those entire 3 years i worked on a lot of projects i had one indian internship but all these internships were scholarship program so that again builds up like the weight of your cv uh, you were getting the, some some fellowship for each of these internships yes right. so in the indian internship also which i did it i did it at iit rudki which was through spark program so it was again a funded program uh, where you have selected amongst everyone and then uh, in my third year i did two international internships one was dadwise in germany and the other was mytax global inc which was in canada so i did these two and both of them were funded programs but i got the opportunity to do both of them that year because of covid and because everything was remote otherwise i could have only gone to one yeah. but luckily it happened and i got two so basically i did two projects because of that and that also and me and at the same time i was also working with my, the professor in my university uh which also mm-hmm. uh, finally became my bachelor's thesis project so i think like all these different projects but uh, the thing was that it was not very different from each other it was all in the realm of genomics uh and cancer genomics specifically so i was trying to get experiences in different sub domains but it all converged into cancer genomics somehow and that's what i showed in my cv and my sop that like this is what i want to do uh, i think that maybe might have worked because by when i was applying at that time i did not have publications um i had submitted two publications but they they were not um accepted by then by my application deadlines uh, these publications were from uh, your internship work um no so uh, one of them so in, in my mytax i got uh, i got into a conference it was like a poster which i made and i presented it at a conference so that was done but um, the other two papers one of them was a review paper and that was one of with one of my profs in my university and the other was a research paper which was again with another prof at my university so these were not out of the internships but it was a part of my bachelor thesis and Uh, the long term project which i did in my college only so right. yeah right. but it did not get accepted before my deadline so i don't know how much difference they made to my cv because they were not accepted but i think otherwise like in general i think uh, maybe because of the uh, research experience which i built just in 3 years that might have uh, made yeah. a difference No, no, for sure. Because it uh, when you start writing your motivation letter or this SOP, you build up some kind of a story. So in your case, you build up a nice story that led up that you are able to show that is me. I have done my work, and now I have to do my work again. Basically, that helped. These two internships that you did one in Dard uh, in Germany and one was in Canada. something uh, tell us something about that how did you come across it and what was the application process like okay so um my tax was uh, the application process is relatively simple you just have like uh, they they have already made their entire portal you just have to submit your uh, research background 
submit your CV and they are already professors and projects listed on their portal. So you just have to choose the professor or the university or the project that suits you and then rank it based on your preference. And then the professor will rank students based on their preference and MyTax is going to link these two people. So nothing is in your hands. You just have to list out your preferences. Uh, and then there are interview calls and if it works, then they are going to give you the position. But in Yard, the system was a little different. I had to mail professors in Germany. Uh, it is open, like you can mail anybody from universities or research institutes. It's it's okay. Um, but you have to mail them. And if they reply uh, positively, then they have to write you an invitation letter. Then you take that, build your application with other documents. And then you have to post it to the DARD office. And then they are basically going to fund your internship. They have nothing to do with what project you are working on or anything. You have to find the prof, you have to find the lab, but uh, they are just, they'll just fund you. So DART is very uh, CGPA specific. If you have like a good pointer above 9.5, I think now it's 9.6, then you are easily going to get it. If you have the letter from the professor, but my tax is not, not that stringent. So even if 8.5 hai pointer ya 9 hai anything uh till the time you are they're finding a match mm -hmm. with a good prof you're good to go no, it's a very different system uh, in both cases so in in uh, germany basically you worked in our lab with with our group mostly for how many weeks six weeks or four weeks yeah yeah it was relatively short yeah it so, was yes. relatively short and uh, she worked with us basically in in our lab and uh, with me and uh, with my supervisor martin and uh, you applied to christoph right you sent the email yeah. to christoph yeah so yeah. christoph is uh, my phd supervisor so with whom she also worked uh, for uh, four weeks not directly but uh, indirectly kind of <laughs> But uh, yeah. anyway, I think that was a really strong uh, point in your application and uh, that helped you out. And yeah, and I think project I worked on in DART, Circular RNA, it was very unique. And like there are not a lot of labs which were working on this. So when I was writing my SOP, uh, I was able to show that I have worked in something like that. And this project was specifically the most challenging out of everything because... The tools which I was using, they were not well documented. We had to figure out, we had to sit like at night yeah. figuring out what the output is, or what these columns are representing. So that I gained a lot out of that, that internship. I mean, really. So that was one, one of the best yeah. internships. No, I think you did mostly on your own. We just helped you out a bit uh, with the, with the all technical <laughs> and the Linux stuff. But uh, it was quite interesting, I think, uh, because that cir circular RNA project was also somewhat of our interest in our group. And uh, it was a good experience for us also. Um, mm -hmm. uh, coming to these, uh, finishing with these fellowships, could you tell us what was the fellowship amount that you got from this DART and from the Canada internship? Uh, I don't remember the exact thing, but yeah, roughly because that year it was remote. So obviously we only received the stipend portion and not the other benefits. So otherwise my tax covers your airfare, your uh, accommodation, then stipend and then relocation, everything. So I think my tax, uh, we received around, um, I don't remember exactly, wait, I just said, uh, sorry. What I mean, in INR, in INR, I remember it was 1 lakh 60,000 mm -hmm. uh, for both the months, like 80, 83,000 or something for uh, one month. So it was like two month internship. That's about 1000 euros one month. Yeah, it must be in dollars. Yeah, but I, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's close. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the conversion, but I got, received it uh, in INR, so I remember that it was 1,70,000 in total. Right. And then uh, for uh, Germany, it was uh, 300 euros per month. 300. Otherwise, uh, for 
otherwise uh, it is 700 or 800 euros if you go to uh, germany just the stipend amount mm. uh, in addition to then other airfare and then your uh, yeah right but it's a lot of money <laughs> right right no but uh, your uh, your area of interest was bioinformatics so it is something yeah. that you can do remotely and uh, yeah. but agar for example experimental kuch kaam karna hota then you had to come here in the to work in yeah. the lab yeah i got lucky so everybody who were into wet lab their internships got cancelled but um, mm. that happened with my tax i don't know with dad because you have to convince the professor so i don't know about that but in my tax uh, a lot of people who are into wet lab their internships got cancelled ab documents ki baat kar lete hain basic like what are the main documents that you need for to start the application okay uh main documents are the cv your sop your research statement that is different from sop and um uh, sometimes they ask for diversity statement where you have to write about whether you faced any hardships and then how you overcame them and your economical background and everything uh sometimes uh, some universities might ask and then phd applications are a little rigorous because sometimes they can even ask for specific essays like i think washington university st louis they asked to they gave a biological question and they wanted my interpretation of that and how how i would convert that into a data science question and answer it like something like that so some such kind of essays might also be there in some tough universities um but in general your recommendations yeah so minimum 3 lors are required but some universities might also ask for 5 uh, maximum 5 but minimum they will it will always be 3 and um that was one thing yeah i think that's all these these are the main and their transcripts university transcripts wow. these are it's it's quite a lot of uh, in in germany they would uh, may not even ask you in many places for any lor if they feel after oh. talking to you if they feel that you are good you can do the work then you are done hired Uh, mm-hmm. you mentioned this research statement and sop what is the difference yeah so sop is gen- mainly about your life story um, yeah. how yeah how you got interested in the field and then even when you are mentioning your projects i usually tell others like tell my juniors that don't write the technical details in your sop that is for the cv or the research statement but in your sop you just have to write it in a way that for example you're writing it for a very general public what you got out of your research that should be written in your sop and what you intend to do in the future uh why do you want to be in that university then you also mention some professors specific to that university in whose lab you are interested that also you mention in your sop so there are basically these things which you have to write in your sop research statement is very very technical so it is going to list your projects and you are going to write like very technical stuff there what you did what methods you used what was your output and basically how that field is going to impact in general the community right. so that has to be written in the research statement yeah so that's the difference right and uh, uh, this is something new because in germany generally the, uh, students send a motivation letter and this uh, cover letter and motivation letter is also called somewhere sop and okay. in that only they put uh, like all the not highly technical but these uh, experience like a story line up and what projects they worked what they learned like soft skills as well as technical skills and so on but interesting did you had any kind of these gre toefl or ielts exam yeah i took gre but um, initially actually my plan was masters but i did not know i can go directly for a phd but later on uh, once i knew then i did not i skipped my masters idea so i did give the gre but for phd mostly they are waiving of the criteria and now it's not required uh masters for masters it's, it might be still required in some universities but otherwise for phd it's almost like you can get away without uh 
uh, the GRE. But TOEFL is compulsory and I gave my TOEFL as well. So yeah, TOEFL or IELTS, anything is accepted. I mean, what I know that both are accepted, but generally TOEFL is somehow more preferred in US and IELTS yeah. is generally preferred some more in, in uh, Europe. Yes. Right. Yeah, what was your score in TOEFL? TOEFL, I got 113, 113. out of 20. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. Um, yeah. I still just have to cross the threshold, which is 25 in each section. In all the four sections, reading, writing, listening and speaking, you just have to go like 25 plus. That's all. Otherwise, like because in some universities, like even in the UC Santa Cruz, they had this criteria that your speaking score should be more than 65 then you will be eligible to TA when you are here uh, in new CSC. And also it was initially it was a requirement just for the application also. So I don't know later on, later on the wave might have waved off, but mm -hmm. so like just 26 above is the safest in all sections. When did you give this exam while uh, uh, sending your applications or exactly when? Yeah, so I got a little late in giving this exam because of these two internships which I had and I did not find time to study for TOEFL but it was a two-week preparation and I gave it in October, I think, end of October in the middle of my application process. So I would not suggest that. You can you should give it in advance uh, because I wasted some time preparing for GRE. That's why I was, I was not able to give TOEFL but uh, like it's not that tough. TOEFL is very simple. It's it's that English you can understand, but GRE English is like <laughs> it's, it's not. Difficult. It is it is just illogical. So I mean, uh, but TOEFL is really easy. Like if you know basic English, uh, two weeks preparation is more than enough. Right. So I just did two weeks. when I was uh, applying for Germany, I it was nothing was compulsory, but it's still preferable to have some kind of exam. I give IELTS. And okay. I think I prepared for say two or three weeks mostly. That's that was sufficient, more than enough. Huh. Uh, also, I don't know. Germany may are there interviews yeah. happening? Interviews yeah. Okay. Is, is, interviews is compulsory. Without yeah. interview, I mean the the uh, in interview they would see that uh, what kind of person you are. To unki lab may fit hoge ki nahi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Abhi to, for example, many supervisors what they do. First, they will have a one-to-one -one session. Then in the next session, second stage, the whole lab will sit and the uh, student would talk to the whole lab. The whole lab would ask them questions oh. and uh, the lab members would also should also be comfortable with the student. Yeah. So, the supervisor asks the students to ask them, how do you feel the students? There is no need to talk about it. So, the compatibility is compatibility necessary. Overall, ये जो तुम्हारा पूरा application process like India से जो PhD ये इसमें आने तक का, what was the overall cost? Like, did you had to pay somewhere some application fees, or you including everything, your traveling cost and everything? Um, so not really. Uh, actually, in my applic, so basically, I so I did my undergrad from IIT BHU, and there was a program uh called. I mean, basically, it was the alums from our university. They started a program where they are going to help students who want to do uh, higher studies after, but directly after BTEC. So um, they, I was selected for that program, and all my application fees were covered by the alums. So the, I was given nine hundred dollars, uh, and I basically covered everything. <laughs> with that money That's so cool. i did not have to pay for the application fee but you have to in general and applications is are they are costly like it's um uh, some it can range from 80 dollars to 150 dollars uh even like you see santa cruz application was 120 dollars like, so what is the costing about like kis baat ka paisa le rahe log? <laughs> application kya chitthi bhejne ke liye <laughs> nahi so. and additional GRE scores bhejne ka bhi paisa hai. GRE scores then TOEFL score GRE is $40 for each university and TOEFL is $20 for each university so in addition to application fee I don't know kyun application fee hai but maybe because they want serious students so as I now we apply for this you apply on, on their online portal right 
Did you don't have to send your hard copy by post or anything. And then at the end of the application, there is a payment uh, portal where you have to pay. Yeah. Okay. This this <laughs> I have never heard. For example, in Germany. Yeah, it can get very costly and uh, mostly. Other, my pass Canada ka nahi ho. Canada also had a fee. Uh, um, but okay, so Canada me things were a little different. That in that program I had like uh, there were two options. Either you can directly contact a professor and professor love likes you then. He'll take you. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you have to apply through the program. So, program ke through apply karoge, then there's a fee. But if a professor directly takes you, then there's no fee. So, mere ko professor ne le liya tha. So, mere ko wahan fee nahi lagi. So, I had the safe option. So, I did not apply to a lot of US universities. Otherwise, main bara tera me to apply karna hi padta just to be. Safe. Then it can range anywhere. Like it can go to one thousand dollars easily. Your just your application fee, including the scores. But uh, नहीं हुआ वो उतना एंड ऑल्सो आई गॉट द स्कॉलरशिप फॉर दैट सो वो वो बच गया नाउ रिलोकेशन रिलोकेशन का भी यूनिवर्सिटी पेड सो वी रिसीव फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड डॉलर जस्ट फॉर एयर ट्रेवल फॉर योर रिलोकेशन तो उसमें आराम से कवर हो गया एयर फेयर एंड uh housing ha so yahan pe housing is very expensive because bay area hai aur matlab bahut zyada housing crisis hai so those stipend is uh, enough but yahan ki living expenses like um life ke hisab se housing expenses ke hisab se thoda uh savings nahi ho pata matlab right. but yeah so that is a little bit of a problem but they are improving on that थोड़ा ग्रोसरीज का दे आर गिविंग सब एडिशनल मनी हाउसिंग का ऑल्सो दे हैव स्टार्टेड टू गिव एडिशनल मनी दैट इज द ओनली चैलेंज बट आई मीन इट्स फाइन आई डोंट आई डोंट स्पेंड अ लॉट सो आई कैन से बट इट माइट बी अ प्रॉब्लम फॉर सम पीपल डिफरेंट पॉइंट होल्ड टूगेदर द ओवरऑल लाइफ वहाँ पे कैसे लाइफ एक्सपीरियंस है द कॉस्ट ऑफ लिविंग एंड स्टफ सो बेसिकली बिफोर coming uh, to uh, during an application process the cost would be for per application let's say 40 to 100 per application yeah. and yeah. then your traveling cost would be let's say another uh, 100 to uh, like 1000 oh no 1, traveling would be around uh, 800 or so 800 right one side mm-hmm. so uh, one in, side. yeah i in are like 1.5 to 2 lakh rupees in total uh yeah i mean it, it can depend so uh 80000 um 80000 dollars or 80000 dollars is the sorry not dollars 80000 inr rupees is the average i would say for one side air fare okay but it can vary from 45 to 1.5 lakhs ek isme bahut important ek point hai Uh, like there are several students who are facing this problem right now as well uh yeah. during the visa uh you had to book in the vfs i i can see already from your face because <laughs> i know uh, there are several students in my contact who have gotten selected in the phd but the whole vfs and the visa process they are uh, getting sucked into it basically so what problem did you face mainly uh i think the only challenge i faced was getting the visa slot appointment it was horrible yeah. i mean the bulk slots were released the uh, initial work slots bulk slots were released in may and by that time i was chilling and i was not very serious about this thing so i missed the first initial slots and i there was also like i think i needed to complete some documentation before i could uh, file my visa appointment uh so my may slots were missed and then after that entire june um half of july there were no slots and it was so difficult because there are only three logins which are allowed and also for these three logins clicks are also specified so it's not like you can do multiple clicks in one login like login so after, I, i don't i did not get okay, so there is a portal yeah. there is a portal where you go to book your slot and then you have to log in every time on that portal uh, to see if these slots are available or not for visa application there will be two process one is the your um, uh, vfs is your bio what do you say 
the fingerprint biometric. and every biometric biometric sorry <laughs> biometric yeah. and the second is your vi which is your visa interview right so mostly the uh, biometric slots were open always but the interview slots were never open mm-hmm. and you can only book the interview slots once your bio, uh, yes, this um, biometric is complete biometric is complete and you cannot even see the visa interview slots until you go through the biometric slots mm. so it was very complicated portal and also your logins were fixed for for 24 hours you can't log in more than 3 times you can't see before your before logging in or before anything that whether these slots are available or not so then it was a i mean i used so many tricks just to see whether like there were so many extensions provided just to see without logging in whether the slots are there or not i was into telegram groups it was a, i mean people who did that will relate but um, it was very tough and we reached a point where we had to we thought of contacting um, somebody who can book slots for us and we'll pay them yeah yeah these uh, agents yeah yeah these agents and i was almost going to finalize it but the next morning the slots opened bulk slots were opened and i booked my slot in delhi i got it in delhi lot of students were doing like biometric in hyderabad and then visa interview in delhi they had to travel one day and not. so i was thinking but, i can that isn't there some kind of a region restriction like you have no. to have some kind of address as a as a no. restriction no aisa nahi hai matlab you can do it anywhere wo problem nahi hai बहुत बच्चे इतना ट्रैवल करके रात भर में इधर उधर कर रहे थे बट लकीली मुझे मिल गया दिल्ली में ही दोनों बट इट वाज अ लॉट ऑफ स्ट्रगल बिकॉज़ पहले से कुछ पता ही नहीं था कि कब खुलने वाला है यू यू गॉट द पोजीशन इन मार्च एंड देन यू गॉट द स्लॉट इन व्हेन जून जुलाई एंड ऑफ जून एंड ऑफ जुलाई एंड ऑफ जुलाई सो ओके बट एंड व्हेन वाज योर पीएचडी जॉइनिंग या सो माय पीएचडी जॉइनिंग वाज actually it was first of october but i had to be here by mid of september so i scheduled my travel date in the beginning of september so you had a plenty of time slot so there are students who got the phd position or do mahine ke baad unki joining hai now good luck yeah. finding the vfs uh, interview slot so that's a huge problem and uh, yeah but once the phd is like you know you're not going to get rejected so they did not ask anything in my interview they said that it's funded okay you are you you are approved vfs mein dono mein matlab interview mein bhi aur biometric mein to kuch khan nahi hai usme to ha matlab dono mein aur koi interviews mein otherwise master students so i was seeing jo mere aage the jo unse pooch rahe the ki how are you going to fund yourself kitna loan liya hai fine mm. uh, family background kya hai masters mein they ask all these yeah. things but phd mein no, there was nothing so the only challenge was to get the slot exactly That's, no no this yeah. is a struggle in my condition <laughs> i would tell you what happened exactly i did not get the slot this is back okay. in 2020 so i got the position in december early december 2019 my phd position was confirmed my joining my supervisor asked because i had to make a contract uh, my supervisor okay. asked me when do you want to start first of mm-hmm. february or first of march मैंने कहा फर्स्ट ऑफ फेब तो थोड़ा रिस्की हो जाएगा फर्स्ट ऑफ मार्च करते हैं आई डिड नॉट गेट द स्लॉट इन टिल एंड ऑफ जनवरी स्लॉट ही नहीं है देन इन डेस्परेशन आई देन आई हैड टू पे समवन टू बुक मी द स्लॉट एंड उसमें भी फिर बहुत कुछ होता है बट उसमें इतना डीप नहीं डिटेल नहीं जाते हैं but uh, i see i mean you have also faced a similar problem yeah. basically uh, so, very bad Yeah, mm-hmm. right now I don't know. They they should really improve uh, improve the system because uh, students and yeah. everyone is suffering. I think. Yeah, I think students may there still open slots for students, but अगर in general US visa की बात करें like travel visa उसकी earliest date twenty twenty five मिल रही है. It's 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 difficult. I don't know what the system is because earlier I think five six years back it used to be go to everything went to embassy. Or yeah. embassy में जान के interview वगैरह होता था. but abhi everything is shifted to the vfs hmm. um but yeah. one thing uh, did your supervisor uh, send some kind of a invitation letter to the embassy like the us embassy or nothing like that no no so so i did not finalize a supervisor i only got offer from the university uh 
like that you are in our cohort of 2022 and they just gave us an offer letter which had all our funding information and everything and we right. just used that to uh in our visa application okay then yeah. the, like when you reach there you have to do this lab rotation then yes. you select the supervisor yeah <laughs> oh, got it okay Mm-hmm. like you have been living in now us this california area now in like one and a half months almost yeah. how is your experience like how is your expenses and uh, the fellowship also a little bit tell us about your fellowship how much you're getting how much is your spending and <laughs> savings ka thoda kitna hota hai nahi hota and like because there are students who have the family responsibility in india mm-hmm. they have mm-hmm. to support their family parents or someone is it really possible to do it and or not that is a very very important question and um, i think uh, experience so far has been very nice that would uh matlab us mein land hote so i landed in sfo san francisco airport aur wahan se fir santa cruz uh, cab leke aana padta hai ya if you can drive yourself jo bhi so uh wo bhi ek distance tha matlab 1.5 um आर्स की जर्नी थी सो सेंटर क्रूज पहुंचना वो थोड़ा सा एक टास्क रहता है एंड यूएस में पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्ट इज नॉट अ थिंग उनको लगता है कि सबके पास गाड़ी होनी चाहिए तो लाइक बसेस वगैरह नहीं चलती बस है लेकिन बहुत ही इनफ्रीक्वेंट सो यू हैव टू शेड्यूल योर डे लाइक एवरी डे अगर मुझे कल जाना है या मेरे पास कल कुछ मीटिंग्स हैं तो आई हैव टू प्री शेड्यूल माई डे कि इतने बजे मुझे निकलना है इस स्टॉप पे जाना है एंड देन आई कैच अब फिर मैं हाफ एन आवर में पहुंचूंगी सो पूरा हर दिन का पहले से शेड्यूल होना चाहिए अदरवाइज तुमको ऐसे अर्जेंटली नहीं होगा मैं नहीं कैब्स आर देयर बट इतना एक्सपेंसिव है कि फिर वही है मतलब तो वो मेरे को ऐसा लगता है कि सेविंग आराम से हो जाएगी यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस कैब्स हाउ डू यू बुक यू लाइक ऊबर और ऊबर एंड लिफ्ट दीज टू सर्विसेज आर हियर सो लिफ्ट एल वाई एफ ओके ओके या तो ये दो सर्विसेज हैं रह अवेलेबल दे आर ऑलवेज अवेलेबल बट बस में जहाँ पे क्योंकि स्टूडेंट्स के लिए बसेज आर फ्री इन सेंटर क्रूज एनी वे बसेज आर फ्री सो बसेज में मतलब अगर तुम पहले से अपना रूटीन सेट कर लो एंड यू कैन टेक अ बस देन दैट इज डेफिनेटली वे चीपर और ऊबर से अगर मैं कैंपस जाऊँ अगर रोज तो वो सेवन डॉलर या एट डॉलर लगेगा वन साइड तो समटाइम्स एलेवन डॉलर भी लग जाते हैं तो I think savings बहुत depend करता है कि how you are planning your uh, your time तुम cook कर रहे हो कि नहीं मतलब मैं तो I cook every day खुद ही cook करती हूँ so अगर you are buying groceries then it's it's not going to be a lot of burden on you in terms of expenses but अगर you have a habit of not cooking and then eating outside even once a week then it can get very expensive because एक बार का ही meal can आराम से take twenty dollars एक ही बार में but okay. बस कभी उबर का तो मैं आने नहीं देती बिल्कुल उस कंडीशन में सो मतलब अपना टाइमली घर आ जाओ इफ इफ यू आर लेट बाहर रात को अकेले देन दैट इज वेरी रिस्की उस केस में ले सकते हो उबर बट try to plan ki tum pehle ghar aa jao and then apni khana have a habit of cooking yourself um don't buy unnecessary stuff especially in the beginning jab tak tumhe pata nahi hai ki how much your entire yearly expenses tab tak to save karna hi chahiye i think first year aram matlab if you know that it's expensive year especially uh, with all the recession inflation thing going yes. on it's uh, it it या आई मीन यू के नॉट टेल अचानक से और समटाइम्स स्पेंडिंग पता नहीं चलती लगता है कि ठीक है फाइव डॉलर ही जा रहा है टेन डॉलर ही जा रहा है बट वेन वेन आई सो आई कीप अ लिस्ट ऑफ माई एक्सपेंसिस एंड देन पूरा मंथली मैं जब गिनती हूँ इवन इतना बचाने के बाद भी एस टू हंड्रेड डॉलर तो हो ही जाता है जस्ट फॉर योर ग्रोसरीज इन एवरी थिंग टू हंड्रेड डॉलर फॉर मंथली ग्रोसरीज या फॉर मंथली यहाँ के हिसाब से ये अच्छा है अदरवाइज थ्री हंड्रेड भी पहुंच जाता है लोगों का and you have in US there is no system of MRP so तुम्हें एक दुकान में दस डॉलर का मिल रहा है दूसरे में एक डॉलर का मिल रहा है तो यहाँ पे ये पता करना बहुत जरूरी है कि कहाँ से मुझे कौन सी चीज लेनी चाहिए सेम सेम करेक्ट यूरोप में भी सेम है 
when हाँ. i first landed in europe na what mm-hmm. i'll tell you a funny experience what happened uh, i i had a layover in uh, in rome a th- okay. uh, three four hours layover in rome i in airport i bought a airport rome ka airport is like a mall it's not a airport it's a huge mall i bought an uh, this uh, uh, water uh, 750 ml water bottle and i spent 2 minutes finding the mrp <laughs> on the <laughs> on the bottle i could not find it and us main fir i i asked how much is this so usne kuch cost bata diya mereko i asked like you are telling this from your mind or like is it written somewhere <laughs> he looked at me and said no it's uh, it's written on the kahin pe to likha tha niche kahin pe तो किसी भी आइटम पे कुछ लिखा नहीं होता यहाँ पे एंड इट्स द सेम आई मीन इधर दो तीन कुछ शॉपिंग आउटलेट है सेम प्रोडक्ट आपको कहीं पे दो यूरो का मिलेगा कहीं पे एक यूरो का मिलेगा सो यू हैव टू रियली लुक एट दीज थिंग्स आई मीन दैट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नहीं तो अदरवाइज एक ही स्टोर में जाके वहीं से सब कुछ ले आना मतलब वो ऑब्वियसली टाइम सेविंग है बट यहाँ नहीं चलेगा ये एक्सपेंसिव इन इन द कैंपस ऑल्सो बहुत सारे मतलब आई थिंक आई एम श्योर बाकी कैंपस में भी होगा कि कुछ फ्री मार्केट करके होता है सो वहां पर दे गिफ लाइक यू कैन जस्ट गो देर पिकअप स्टफ एंड जस्ट कम आउट सो बेसिकली वो उन लोगों का हेल्प करने क्योंकि यहाँ पे चीजें एक्सपेंसिव है एंड फॉर स्टूडेंट्स इट्स डिफिकल्ट टू अफोर्ड सर्टन थिंग्स तो वो लोग कुछ फ्रीली अवेलेबल कराते हैं लाइक बेसिक ग्रोसरीज मिल्क हो गया एग्स हो गया बट यू हैव टू चेक कभी कभी वो थो, मतलब थोड़े पुराने होते हैं वो तो कुछ चीजें चेक करनी पड़ती हैं कि तुम यूज कर सकते हो कि नहीं या तुम ले आए अगर वो सब्जी तो वो एक ही दिन में बना दो यूनिवर्सिटी स्टूडेंट्स so, के लिए है काइंड kind ऑफ of. हाँ केवल स्टूडेंट्स के लिए है तो वो लेकिन हाँ एकदम फ्री दिस इज समथिंग इंटरेस्टिंग आई नेवर या सम कैंपसेस हैव दैट लाइक हियर आल्सो बिग सो दे दे बेसिकली एक्सपेंसिव है यूनिवर्सिटी इम्प्रूव कर रही है पर वो अपने तरीके से मतलब हेल्प करती है जैसे फ्री मार्केट अवेलेबल करा दिया तुमको रिसोर्सेज दे देंगे सारे कि यहाँ पे कभी सर्टेन डेज मैंने पता लगाया कि जहाँ पे पिज्जा वन डॉलर का मिलता है उस दिन पिज्जा स्लाइड तो स्लेक्टिंग स्पेसिफिक टाइम स्लॉट एंड स्पेसिफिक डे तो आई मीन अगर मन करता है कभी तो उस दिन को ऐसा शेड्यूल कर लो कि उस दिन खा लो तो मतलब यहाँ थोड़ा अवेयर रहना पड़ता है ऐसा नहीं है कि हाँ तो वो एक चीज है तो उससे यू कैन सेव अ लॉट आई थिंक और खिचड़ी <laughs> It yeah. was horrible, and then <laughs> I started to learn to cook. So it's yeah, yeah. I mean, LSE cooking. If it comes, you you can survive. I'm a ram. I mean, my my friends tease me that you eat a gunti a day, and you but I mean that is the best way because twenty dollars ka aata you get, and uh, otherwise, if you ready made roti, you get five dollar ki. I think five or ten aati hai, and Very always expensive. always better if you're cooking yourself. बहुत सेव हो जाता है. so that is the way otherwise like ha huh, so my funding um it is uh, based like my, my package is around 39000 dollars per annum. uh per annum excluding taxes so up this is the gross amount this is the gross yeah and isme um complex hai bahut matlab taxation system thoda complicated hai um because every so in the first year we are not we are not in a lab nor we are a ta we are just doing courses and rotating in different labs so first year mein not like the entire first year first year except the spring quarter so utna time mein you are you will be funded through a fellowship to wo ek kuch do 6 months ki ya 7 months ke is period ke liye wo fellowship se dete hain fellowship mein there is very less tax deduction तो उस समय यू विल गेट मंथली थोड़ा ज्यादा मिल जाएगा इन जनरल बट और फिर व्हेन यू स्टार्ट विद योर जीएसआर और योर टीए और जो भी जिस अब तुम्हारी फंडिंग आफ्टर यू आर फाइनलाइज अ लैब नाउ द प्रोफेसर इज गोइंग टू पे यू तो उसमें चाहे तुम टीए करके लो चाहे जीएसआर uh, करके लो इट विल बी लिटिल डिफरेंट एंड आई थिंक टैक्स डिडक्शन उसमें थोड़ा ज्यादा होता है दैट इज दी ओनली थिंग बट ऑन एन एवरेज 
monthly i can i'll get like around 26 2700 $2, after right. tax deduction right aur ye tax mein health insurance wagera covered hai ha sab so health insurance is covered your daily transportation any innumerable tumko jitne buses leni hai lo right. wo covered hai uh Also other supplements भी जैसे रिलोकेशन दिया था इन्होंने तो वो लोग पूरा बल्क अमाउंट देते हैं इट डजेंट मैटर कि तुम्हारा कितने का टिकट आया था तो मेरे को सस्ती फ्लाइट मिल गई थी तो आई सेव थाउजेंड डॉलर आउट ऑफ फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड डॉलर और उसमें मैं एक और राउंड ट्रिप लेके आ गई इंडिया से तो यू कैन सेव दैट वे और ये तो चलो वन टाइम रहता है बट अदरवाइज मंथली ट्वेंटी फाइव हंड्रेड डॉलर हाउसिंग एज अ हाउसिंग सप्लीमेंट देख नॉट मंथली सॉरी एनुअली Twenty five hundred dollars they give as a housing supplement, but obviously it's not enough because यहाँ मेरा जो घर है उसमें one एक एक room का I'm paying fifteen hundred dollars. Fifteen hundred dollars. Yes. This is like sharing apartment or like single apartment. Ah, uh, I mean there are two people staying. It's a two bedroom apartment. We got a good apartment. Luckily, ah, uh, मेरा अपना wash bathroom है private. मेरा अपना room है. It's fully furnished, including utilities, मतलब Wi-Fi, सब कुछ included है, so fifteen hundred rent में, so okay. we both are paying individually fifteen hundred, fifteen hundred. Only so, kitchen is sharing. Yeah. Kitchen is. Yeah, kitchen is sharing. Yeah, kitchen okay. is sharing. But it's still two people, and she's also an Indian, hmm. so हमको मतलब इससे problem नहीं हो रही है, but otherwise यहाँ घर ढूँढना it is very difficult. Very difficult. बहुत scams हो जाते हैं, and it's very expensive. Luckily हमें मिल गया, वो एक बहुत अलग कहानी है, but um, वैसे मैं कह रही हूँ कि 1500 आउट ऑफ 2700 जो भी तुम्हें सैलरी मिल रही है मंथली 1500 तो इसी में चला जाता है ओके okay. और उसके बाद उसमें से ग्रोसरीज का निकालना बट द गुड थिंग इज की इट इज फुल्ली फर्निश्ड एंड इंक्लूड्स यूटिलिटीज तो तुम्हें वरी नहीं करना होता लाइट का और वाईफाई का यूसेज गैस का यूसेज कुछ जो करना है करो सो right. so, Santa Cruz and San Francisco, these two areas, because यहाँ पे सारा पूरा ये बे के साइड में है एंड ऑल्सो सारे जो भी वर्किंग लोग हैं जो सैन फ्रांसिस्को में काम करते हैं लॉट ऑफ पीपल इनका हॉलीडे वेकेशन और ये वाला एरिया रहता है सेंटर क्रूज इज लाइक अ टूरिस्ट प्लेस सो कम्प्लीट बीच बीच टाउन इट्स कॉल्ड बीच टाउन इट्स वेरी ब्यूटिफुल बहुत ही ज्यादा मतलब तो एक्सपेंसिव है सब कुछ है बट आई थिंक इसीलिए एक्सपेंसिव है क्योंकि जिसको खाना बनाना नहीं आता है वो बंदा कैसे सरवाइव करेगा फिर इनिशियल उसको सीखने हाँ, में टाइम लगेगा वही, वही मतलब ये ऐसी सिटी नहीं है और इन जनरल कैलिफोर्निया ऐसी जगह नहीं है जहाँ तुम आ, बाहर रोज मतलब ऐसे अफोर्ड कर सकते हो सम ऑफ माय फ्रेंड्स हुआ इन न्यू जर्सी वहाँ बहुत इंडियंस हैं बहुत इंडियन स्टोर है इंडियन रेस्टोरेंट है और टिफिन सिस्टम भी है इनफैक्ट वहाँ तो कुछ जगह है ऐसी हाँ और वहाँ कॉस्ट ऑफ लिविंग उतना ज्यादा नहीं है मतलब इतना ज्यादा जितना यहाँ दिस इज सेंटा क्रूज इज द मोस्ट एक्सपेंसिव सिटी इन यूएस सैन फ्रांसिस्को एंड सेंटा क्रूज तो इससे ज्यादा तो कहीं नहीं होगा इवन न्यूयॉर्क इससे सस्ता है बट इसीलिए मतलब यहाँ अगर वो तो करना ही पड़ेगा यू नो यू शुड नो हाउ टू कुक बहुत I'm uh, US में भी I like I talk to students who are from this New Jersey uh, उधर mm-hmm. भी LA वगैरह में भी it's uh, cheaper fifteen hundred dollars तो काफी it's uh, expensive yeah eight hundred eight hundred nine hundred तक रहता है बस उसके अस्स ज़्यादा नहीं right. so so that or yeah <laughs> वो ये oh. चीज़ है वो ये क्या लेते हैं but it's fine इतना फर्क अन अन जब तक मैं save ही नहीं कर रही होती तब मुझे थोड़ा लगता बट काफी है इवन इफ यू आर सेविंग फाइव हंड्रेड डॉलर पर मंथ क्या करना है अभी इतना नहीं राइट बट फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू आर स्टूडेंट जिसको यू है
yeah then then, then you don't have any savings for sure like initially to koi saving nahi hoga acha udhar jo fellowship ka structure hai jaise ki main germany ka pehle ek bar reference de deta hu so in germany fellowship reference uh, structure is that cost of living is considerably lower and uh, fellowship ka bhi idhar like uh, alag contract hota hai but tv od karke bolte hain usko ई थर्टीन करके कॉन्ट्रैक्ट होता है एंड देन उसमें फिफ्टी परसेंट सिक्सटी फाइव परसेंट सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट कॉन्ट्रैक्ट होता है बट जनरल सैलरी आई वुड से पी एच डी स्टूडेंट्स का फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड यूरो से ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी थ्री हंड्रेड यूरोज तक मिलता है तो बट मोस्टली स्टूडेंट्स वुड स्टार्ट समवेयर बिटवीन फोर्टीन फिफ्टीन सिक्सटीन हंड्रेड यूरोज ऐसा एंड देन ईयरली यू गेट सम इंक्रीमेंट so this is same in uh, yeah, your case year you also. get some increment yeah. yearly for me yeah. for example uh, it's my final year right uh, so i have to submit the thesis then i have to, then i basically for some time i'm jobless and i'm <laughs> employed so this is the story because i have to find a post doc position or some job employment something like that mm-hmm. uh, but let's see so or what was the phd कितना साल हो गया? इयर्स। ये अब जर्मनी और इसमें बहुत टाइम पास कर लिया निकलो बहुत चाय पी लिया सही है बट जर्मनी में जनरली जो एक्सपेक्ट किया जाता है जो इनिशियल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट बनता है वो तीन साल का बनता है थ्री इयर्स का बट इफ फॉर एग्जांपल जो एक्सपेरिमेंटल लोग होते हैं एक्सपेरिमेंटल साइंटिस्ट वो लोग तीन साल में थोड़ा मुश्किल हो जाता है उन लोगों को बिकॉज दे टू रन एक्सपेरिमेंट्स दे टेक टाइम एंड सो वन सो दे एक्सटेंड आइजर फ्रॉम सिक्स मंथस और फोर वन ईयर एक्सटेंशन मिल जाता है सो लाइक फोर ईयर्स बट बहुत रेयर होता है कि तुम्हारा फाइव सिक्स इयर्स खिंच जाए ऐसा बहुत रेयर होता है बट जनरली थ्री इयर्स में थ्री थ्री एंड हाफ ईयर्स में पी एच डी डन है आपको टाइम बच जाता है नहीं तुम्हारे तुम्हारा वो है ना फोर इयर्स का तो मेरा तो मास्टर्स के बाद भी दो साल आई वर्क नहीं यहाँ पे बहुत लोग ऐसे हैं मतलब मास्टर्स के बाद दो साल काम करा है फिर आए हैं पीएचडी तो उनको भी मतलब पांच साल तो लग ही जाएगा करते करते हाँ नहीं मेरा मेन आई नेवर अप्लाइड इन यूएस आई ओनली फोकस्ड यूरोप स्पेसिफिकली जर्मनी फॉर दिस रीजन कि जल्दी खत्म हो जाएगा हाँ नहीं अगर कोई एक्सपीरियंस है पहले से तो फिर क्यों इतना लंबा मतलब मैं भी पहले कैम्ब्रिज uh, वगैरह में अप्लाई करना चाहती थी बट वहाँ प्रॉब्लम यही थी कि चार साल का था पीएचडी और मेरे को नहीं था उतना एक्सपीरियंस मुझे पता था कि मेरे से नहीं होगा इतना जल्दी इसलिए mm-hmm. मैंने यूएस या कैनेडा लिया था तो अदरवाइज अगर है पता है तो फिर तो खैर आई थिंक मच बेटर है यूरोप और लाइफ भी थोड़ा मैंने सुना है इन जनरल की मतलब बेटर है वहाँ बैलेंस जो पॉइंट आता है वो आप बैलेंस कर सकते हो आप हाँ. मतलब लेकिन यहाँ पे मतलब बाप रे बाप मतलब ऐसा नहीं कर नहीं सकते लेकिन यहाँ पे वर्क कल्चर बहुत अच्छा लगा मुझे कोई क्योंकि इनके पास इतने रिसोर्सेज हैं इतना पैसा है कि वो उसकी टेंशन ही नहीं होती उनको उनको है कि उनको आइडियाज चाहिए उनको काम करवाना है बस काम हो जाए तो उस उस तरीके से माइंड सेट थोड़ा अलग है ऐसा तो मैं बैठ के वो नहीं करना पड़ेगा ओहो स्टोरेज तो मेरा बहुत ज्यादा लग गया आप क्या करूँ मतलब ऐसा कोई दिख गया क्लाउड स्पेस कैसे लू ये सारी प्रॉब्लम्स नहीं होती तो काम एकदम फटाफट इतना जल्दी मतलब एक हफ्ते में इतना इतना सारा काम हो जाता है कि वीकेंड तक तो एकदम ऐसा जाता है बस करो तो बिल्कुल वर्किंग डेज कैसा है मतलब मंडे टू फ्राइडे हाँ मतलब मेरा कॉम्प्यूटेशनल है तो मेरे को ऐसा कोई वो नहीं है कि जाना है तो चली जाती हूँ बट अभी कोर्सेज चल रहे हैं तो इसलिए बीच बीच में क्लासेस के लिए चला जाती हूँ बट वो ये मंडे टू फ्राइडे है बाकी जब करना है कर लो ऐसा कुछ नहीं है देना भी ठीक नहीं है थैंक्स टू यू बिग थैंक्स वीकेंड के दिन सुबह सुबह उठा दिया अरे नहीं बिल्कुल नहीं अच्छा लगा मुझे बात करके बहुत अच्छा लगा इतना बात हिंदी में बात करके ए मैं भी सेम टू यू गुड टू टॉक टू यू या सेम फॉर ऑल द बेस्ट अपने पीएचडी को डिफेंड करने के लिए थैंक यू ऑल द बेस्ट टू यू टू आई होप यू गेट अ गुड लैब गुड सुपरवाइजर बिकॉज़ दैट्स सुपर इंपॉर्टेंट सुपरवाइजर के साथ अच्छे से तुम्हारा वो रैपो बन जाए 
ताकि पूरा फिर स्मूथ जाएगा सुपरवाइजर अच्छा नहीं मिलता ना पूरा पीएचडी एकदम खराब एक्सपीरियंस हो जाता है सो चूज वाइजली सो दैट वॉज इट फॉर दिस वीडियो गाइज इफ यू फाउंड द वीडियो इन्फॉर्मेटिव डू कंसिडर हिटिंग दैट रेड बटन इट्स फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट एंड इट मोटिवेट्स मी टू कीप मेकिंग सच यूजफुल कॉन्टेंट फॉर यू गाइज इफ यू नो सम वन हु इज फेसिंग प्रॉब्लम्स विद द एप्लीकेशन प्रोसेस और डज नॉट नो हाउ टू गो अबाउट इट हाउ टू स्टार्ट इट डू शेयर द वीडियो विद दैम इट वुड रियली हेल्प दम आउट do mention in the comment section how do you like this kind of video was the video too long or should i make shorter videos do i should i make a highlight video covering all the points in a separate video and very short like under 10 or 12 minutes would you like to see something like that uh, do mention in the comment section and uh, i'll see you guys next time till then keep learning and help out each other bye